Thomas Hill Green, T.H. Green was not only a philosopher but also a practical politician who took keen interest in the politics of England. He was born in Yorkshire in 1836 in the family of a clergyman. After completing his education Green took up teaching assignment and ultimately became Professor of Philosophy in 1878. He also took keen interest in active politics. Some of the important works which contain political philosophy of T.H. Green are Lectures on the Principles of Political Obligation, Lectures on Liberal Legislation and Freedom of Contract, Lectures on the English Revolution, and Prolegomena to Ethics. T.H. Green and Main drew inspiration from four sources viz. Greek tradition, philosophy of Rousseau, German idealism and nonconformism. Green does not consider state as an end in itself but a means for the moral development of the individual. He says the aim of man is self-realization and freedom is the primary means to this end. But when the self-consciousness postulates liberty it not only knows itself but also identified itself with others. The individual self is the social self. It not only wills the good of itself but also wills the goodness in relation to others which gives rise to the system of rights. According to Green the rights inhere in the individual and are not a product of any contract. However, these rights inherent in the individual only as members of society which gives recognition to these rights. According to Green, people obey the laws of the state because it appears to them that these laws promote common good. Green's ideas about state can be summed up thus, state is a natural institution necessary for the moral realization of the individual, if the rights are not enforceable they are meaningless, Green justifies the use of force by the state because it represents the general will of the people the authority of the state limited from within as well as without. Green expressed views on sovereignty which constitutes a compromise between the views of Rousseau and Austin. He uses the term, sovereign for the legal sovereign who enforces the laws, but at the same time regards him rarely as an agent of the general will. Green also examines the issue why the people obey the state. He says that man renders obedience to the state only because it is a natural instinct of man but also because he realizes that his best self or moral development can be possible only by rendering obedience to the similar good of others. Green asserts that an individual has a duty to obey the law of the state and other civil institutions because through these institutions alone he gets the hindrances removed which stand in the way of his perfection. Green also developed the concept of general will which is fundamentally different from Rousseau's concept of general will. Green implies by general will the common consciousness of a common good and asserts that all rights, duties and institutions of society is the product of general will. Green's views on freedom were greatly influenced by the Greek political thinkers, Hegel and Kant. According to Green, freedom is the greatest of all the blessings and a vital condition for the moral development of the individual. Green offered a positive concept of freedom and described it as the power of doing or enjoying something worth doing or enjoying in common with others. Further, it does not include freedom to do anything and everything. It includes the pursuit of only those objects which make our lives better. Green defined right as, the claim on an individual to will his own ideal objects and developing his capacities of reason and will. According to Green, the basis of rights was not legal recognition but common moral consciousness. Green rejected the concept of natural rights insofar as it implied the existence of certain rights in the pre-social state, according to him there would be no rights without recognition. Green concedes to the individual the right to resist the state but his treatment of this question is very sober and cautious. He permits the individual to resist the authority of the state but only under certain exceptional circumstances. Green's views on property represent a pleasant mixture of idealism, individualism and liberalism. He neither fully supported the institution of property nor criticized it out and out. The concept of universal brotherhood is probably one of the most distinctive contribution of green political thought. To ensure that all men are able to enjoy their natural rights and attain their growth, Green pleads for an international court of law which could adjust the relations among the smaller groups of nation-states. He, in fact assumes, that the good of the individual was implicit in the good of the humanity. Intimately linked with this are Green's views on war. He asserts that war can never be an absolute right, it can be at best a relative right. He opposed war because it violates the right of the man to life. Green did not accept the principle if inevitability of war among states. He says that wars do not exist because the states exist, but because the states do not fulfill their duty of maintaining the general rights. Like other political thinkers Green also has his critics who have found faults with his theory of sovereignty, his views on property etc. the on the ground that these are not logical and satisfactory.